1999, there was a conference in Wales where the world peace flame was lit and it continues to be lit to this day and will continue. And one of my assistants that year for the Heal Your Life workshop leader training bought a, brought a candle that had been lit from that one to the workshop. And ever since then, we have been doing a peace ritual at the end of every training. And we encourage our Heal Your Life workshop leaders to do the same at the end of each one of their workshops. So I have one of those candles lit here in front of Louise's picture. And it is one of the ones that is lit from that original peace flame and now continues on as we share the rituals of peace and really affirm and pray for peace worldwide. And so last year I was so excited that my guest today, Toby Oliver, um, is one of the Drew Yoga people that actually that group started this whole initiative. And what is really amazing, and he's going to tell you about that, is that military jets flew these candles lit from other continents and other peacemakers and other countries to Wales for this conference. So welcome, Toby. I am so thrilled to have you today and to really explain the whole process behind this because I was really delighted to hear you talk all about it recently. Thank you, Patricia. It's so lovely to talk to you today. And the, the World Peace Film is such a special, such a special symbol, and I think peace is so important for us, and never more so than at the moment. I think, given the challenges we the world seems to be facing, um, and what's so lovely, the the peace flame came about because the team who set up Drew Yoga, they were taking the Drew Yoga, which is very much a yoga of the heart. Um, to war zones and particularly in mm. Eastern Europe and they were working with people in Bosnia who'd faced terrible traumas um, and they realized that whilst it was wonderful to help these people who'd suffered these experiences wouldn't it be even better if we could prevent people being in that situation so it started as a dream you know actually could we bring about world peace what could we do um, and then there was this idea and people got behind the idea to create uh, a living monument to world peace. Um, and that's where the idea of the world peace flame came about. And, and I think with any, as we know, with any, that you have an idea um, and you, you work with that idea and you share it. And it's like that idea gets passed from other people and it grows in energy. And they had this vision to bring flames from five, the five continents um, together. So seven flames were lit, um, lit in Europe, in Canada, in Asia, in, in, um, in America, in the Middle East, um, and in Australasia as well. And these flames were lit by a variety of people. So in Canada, it was lit by a, a First Nation chief. Um, in the Netherlands, it was lit by, um, the um, princess of the Netherlands. So it was a range of people. Um, the flame in, in Asia was lit in India, uh, at Gandhi's memorial in Delhi. Um, mm. And they had these flames, these seven flames, and the idea was to bring them together to create one flame at this conference in North Wales that was looking into world peace on the eve of the millennium. Um, so they had this idea, they arranged getting these flames lit and they were lit and housed in these beautiful old brass miners lamps, so Welsh miners lamps. Um, and then they were faced with the, the challenge of bringing these flames back <laughs> to the UK. <laughs> and I think at this point, no one had thought about that. And it's probably a good job because they probably would have, would have, would have had these limiting beliefs that said, oh, we can't do it. And of course they approached these commercial airlines <laughs> and said, um, can we bring these flames, explained it. and unsurprisingly the airline said no and these were in the days before 9-11 so you imagine now you probably you know you'd probably be reported uh, so yes so there was an absolute no so they thought well, what what can we do and one of the people involved with Drew Yoga um, had, a had a relative who was serving in the in the armed forces um, who they sort of were talking about this problem, this challenge too. And they said, well, had you tried approaching the Air Force? Uh, and they said, because of military jets, they mm -hmm. don't need the same regulations. Mm -hmm. So they said, yeah. well, no. So they decided to contact the military and it ended up getting passed 
through the you know through the ranks and they finally came to i think it was like a an, an air marshal or, or a, you know, like an equivalent of a field marshal so really high up one of the really senior ranking mm -hmm. officers who said okay that sounds like an interesting idea come and talk to me so they went in and they talked to this man about it and said this is our vision to bring to bring world peace and to create this monument and then to have monuments from this flame all around the world and he said i like i like that idea i feel that my role um in the air force is to actually is as a peacekeeper um mm -hmm. and and so in the end they they and he then con he then put them in touch with different um air forces uh, across the world so it was a combination of dutch german american and australian air forces who came together and said, yes, we'll carry the flame. And what was so interesting is that they, not, they didn't just carry the flame, they carried that flame with such reverence and respect. Um, and what they found is that when the flame, when the flame was landed in the UK, the air crews all stood outside and they saluted as this frame, flame was taken off each of the planes because they realized that actually they were genuinely carrying out a mission for peace that actually they were carrying peace rather than missiles mm -hmm. and they were bringing hope into the world so it was a really beautiful thing and it really inspired inspired them so these seven flames were flown and they were reunited in north wales as part of this the culmination of this this world of peace um, conference and they then combined into this single flame which is the world peace flame and it's burning to this day at the, the home of Drew Yoga in North Wales, and it's a beautiful valley in North Wales. And, and there is this wonderful monument, uh, the, the Living Flame, and then around it, carved in Welsh slate, is the, world, is the word peace in every language of the world. Wonderful. So it's yeah. saying that peace, this hope for peace, this wish for peace, defies you know, all of the differences we see, the external differences, such as, race or religion or mm -hmm. gender or sexuality any of those things and we realize that actually at the end of the day we all want to live in peace um and it's just it's such it's such a beautiful thing and i i light up my peace flame every morning and every evening as i think most true yoga um teachers and a lot of students do and so when i came to do my training well actually when i came to do my workshop in the uk my first two-day workshop and at the end of it the, the wonderful workshop leader, Jay Matthews. She lit the World Peace Flame and we came back from a break and I sat down and I saw the World Peace Flame and I thought, I'm imagining things. <laughs> Why is the World Peace Flame here? Mm -hmm. um, and, at, and at that point, I knew that Ajay was on the right path, mm -hmm. that actually that the calling to then do the training and can, you know, continue the heal your life work because actually the, it's the same, you know, we know that by, by igniting that flame of peace that um, within each heart that actually we can then change the world, can't we? We change each individual and then we change the world. And that's what the world peace flame is about. Absolutely. And I was so thrilled to find out, you know, how it actually came together because I always wondered, how did anyone get military jets to take these flames to North Wales? And so it was so wonderful to meet you and know the whole backstory to all of this. And now there are those monuments in several different countries. And again, at the Heal Your Life Workshop Leader Training, we also end mm -hmm. with peace flame every single time. And then each person gets their own candle that's lit in sequence from that peace flame to take back to do their workshops as Jane did with you. And so it's wonderful to just know that that's being carried on. So what I would like to do is just complete with a little um, meditation for peace and using this candle. And I would ask that everyone who is watching this video, if you would also with us, just take a few moments to just close your eyes, take a nice deep breath, and just send out that energy for peace all around your city, your country, and all around the world. And at some points, it may seem like a far-off vision, 
And yet the more of us that join together and just visualize peace, the sooner it will happen. Breathing in peace, and then breathing out that wish for peace, that prayer for peace, that affirmation for peace, out from your heart and mind worldwide. And so it is. And so it is. And if you'd like to learn more about it, you can go to worldpeaceflame.org. And that gives you more information about what we've talked about today on the video. And also, if you even wanted to order some of the peace flames or peace candles so that you can have your own, you can do that as well. So again, Toby, thank you so much for being with me today and sharing all the information. And it's wonderful that you are you know, doing the Drew Yoga from the heart and sharing that and also as a workshop leader with us. So thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Patricia. It's a pleasure.